The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Welcome into a Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Been saying it for months, actually almost a year now. Uh, they have a great sales department, fantastic service department, and an amazing finance department. Amazing in that you're going to be put into a car with as low an interest rate as humanly possible, courtesy of Tracy Bryden, Letonia grad, don't you know? Uh, so before you put pen to paper and sign the next four to seven years of your life away in terms of car loans and whatnot, you owe it to yourself to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. All right, we have a lot of good things going on today, a lot of baseball going on today uh, due to Mother Nature's shenanigans with the uh, showers and whatnot. Uh, all of the local games were pushed back until today. Uh, the South Range softball game was pushed back until Saturday because uh, divisions, I believe divisions one and four will be doing their state semifinals uh, today. Saturday will be the D2 and D3 state semifinals. And then on Sunday, we'll have championship Sunday at Firestone Stadium in Akron. But as far as the baseball games uh, for today, Division Four, Warren JFK is going to be taking on Columbia Station. Uh, Columbia High School out of Columbia Station, Ohio. That's going to be a 1.30 start. And then at 4.30 in the afternoon, Matthews will be playing Tiffin Calvert. There is a chance we could be seeing an all-local regional championship game in D4, much like we saw the all-regional softball championship game in Division Three. Speaking of Division Three, South Range will be taking on Gilmore Academy at 5 o'clock. That's at Matt. And in Division Two, Canfield and Salem are going to be playing today at 2 o'clock this afternoon. That'll be at Canton Glen Oak High School. The winner of that game gets the winner of what promises to be a great high school baseball game at 5 o'clock. Akron Hoban taking on Chagrin Falls. Uh, that'll be a 5 o'clock game. By the way, the South Range Gilmore Academy winner uh, on Saturday... Uh, we'll get the winner of Burton Berkshire and Canton Central Catholic. That game is set to begin at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Now, if South Range advances to the title game, it's going to be a 2 o'clock start because South Range has graduation on Saturday. So it would be a 2 o'clock start uh, if South Range wins that game. Uh, on uh, today against uh, Gates Mills Gilmore Academy. If South Range doesn't win the game, it'll be a 5 o'clock start. But then again, who the hell cares because our local team will be out. Uh, so if South Range wins, because South Range is going to have their high school graduation on Saturday, why they're not doing it on Sunday is, you know, I mean, I, normally, at least when I was, well, this goes back a couple of decades. Well, let's be honest, more like three decades, pushing four. Anyway, we, we did it on Sunday. 
Uh, but South Range is graduating their kids on Saturday. And because of that, uh, if South Range does, in fact, uh, win, they will play their game at 2 o'clock. Uh, if it's if South Range does not win, well, the championship game will be played at 5 o'clock, and nobody around these parts will care. Uh, if South Range wins, they get the winner of Burton Berkshire and Canton Central Catholic. Uh, by the way, the uh, Division Four state champ or the uh, Division Four regional championship game. Uh, if JFK is in it, it will be at high noon, twelve noon, uh, at uh, at Maslin, Washington. Or I'm sorry, at um, Strongsville on the west side of Cleveland. It'll be a 12 noon game. If JFK and Matthews both win, there is a possibility that this game becomes a local regional championship game. Now, it won't be at Scene Park because there are some uh, uh, some prior commitments. There, there was talk that uh, had we played baseball yesterday, that uh, if Matthews and JFK had won yesterday, uh, they would have played today at 2 o'clock at Bob Scene Park. Uh, because there are some prior commitments, uh, they will not be able to play uh, assuming both teams were to win, they would not be able to play uh, that regional championship game at Bob Seam Park. Uh, my guess is you'd probably play that game at Fitch, although, again, it's up in the air. Uh, they may just keep the game at Strongsville. Who knows at this point? Uh, hopefully, JFK and Matthews both win their games. Uh, as far as the Division Two. Uh, this, the uh, Division Two Regional Championship game, uh, we can tell you uh, we, we have a guaranteed team in the regionals. Uh, so we can tell you the Regional Championship game is 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, so whoever wins the Salem-Canfield game is going to be playing tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. at Canton Glen Oak High School. They would play the winner of Akron Hoban and Chagrin Falls. All right, so that's going on uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. South Range. Uh, actually, that game is uh, is Saturday at 12.30. I beg your pardon. Uh, Saturday at 12.30. Tomorrow at 12.30. Uh, South Range will be playing Johnstown Monroe High School. Uh, that'll be at 12.30 on Saturday. Should South Range win that ball game, they would take on the winner of Sherwood Fairview and Wheelersburg. Uh, South Range would take on the winner of the Sherwood Fairview Wheelersburg game Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. So if South Range wins tomorrow at 12.30 at Firestone Stadium, they would go back to Firestone Stadium on Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock, and they would take on the winner of the Sherwood-Fairview-Wheelersburg game for the Division Three state championship. We've made mention all week long uh, how interesting it would be uh, if South Range were to get an opportunity to beat Wheelersburg, uh, this is five years in the making. As a matter of fact, my Facebook timeline reminded me five years ago today, Wheelersburg knocked off South Range. Uh, I broadcast that game. Uh, it was five years ago today uh, that Wheelersburg had knocked off South Range. So uh, there you go. Hopefully South Range gets an opportunity to uh, to play Wheelersburg for a Division Three state championship. But in order to do that, they have to get past Johnstown Monroe. That game is tomorrow afternoon at 1230. Uh, so there you go. Uh, the the uh, girls will play at uh, 1230 tomorrow, and the guys are playing at 5 o'clock today uh, against uh, Gilmore. And uh, the South Range game, uh, if the if the Raiders go to the title game, it would be at two o'clock on Saturday afternoon. I'm a little uh, a, a little uh, disappointed in that you would be playing that championship game about the same time the South Range girls are playing their state semifinal game. I don't know why they wouldn't move that game to five o'clock. That doesn't make any sense. You would think that that game would be at five o'clock because that would enable the South Range fans to 
see both the South Range girls playing in the state semifinals and then scoot over uh, to uh, to Maslin and see the Division Three regional championship game at 5 o'clock. I, I don't understand why you would play the game at 2, considering the fact that both programs would be playing relatively the same time. But and that's, a, that's a mystery that the OHSAA would have to uh, solve, not me. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. I got my YSU uh, polo on, mainly because... In about five minutes, we're going to be hearing from the head football coach of the Youngstown State University Penguins, Doug Phillips. He's going to be coming on the show. We're going to talk Penguins football. Uh, The spring, it was interesting to see the the kind of football that Youngstown State played in the uh, very limited schedule, uh, limited in terms of the fact that they only played the Missouri Valley Football Conference. We're going to talk with Coach Phillips about the culture, of this team, uh, talk about what he liked, what he didn't like in the spring, and some of the things that they are going to be uh, working on, some of the things that they're doing behind the scenes to get ready for a much deeper fall season, deeper in terms of more games on the schedule, although it's not a complete season. Uh, the Penguins, I believe they they have 10 games on the schedule. I'll, I'll have to uh, double check. Uh, but but certainly it is a uh, it is a much fuller schedule uh, this fall, and it should be an, an awful lot of fun uh, to see what the Penguins do this fall. So we're going to have a state of the Penguins, state of the football Penguins. Uh, that's going to be coming up with Coach Phillips in a matter of moments, and we'll open up the phone lines to you, the fans, during the course of the day as well. Got an interesting story and a moronic story at that out of Canton McKinley High School. Their football coach and six assistants fired for doing something so incredibly juvenile and incredibly stupid. Uh, They deserve to be fired, and more importantly, they probably deserve to never coach the game again uh, until they take a couple of lessons in how to be a freaking grown-up and not be stupid. All right, we'll take a time out. Coach Phillips is coming up next. Stick around. It is a Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. Visit GreenwoodChevrolet.com and tell us how we can go the extra mile for you. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now is the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's win together. 
Call K Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. At Hubbard Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Page, to get a new vehicle today. Remember, folks, Hubbard can help. Welcome back to a Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline, the head football coach of the Youngstown State University Penguins, Doug Phillips. Coach, how are you today, sir? I'm doing great. How are you guys? I- I'm doing wonderful. A uh, quick turnaround for everyone. Of course, I mean, we kind of understood that it was going to be a quick turnaround with the uh, with the spring schedule and uh, about three months of rest before you get ready for the summer workouts. How is everything going uh, with the kids? Uh, are they keeping busy? And when do you expect the kids to come back for the start of fall practice? Well, what's nice is this year, June's back to being a little bit of craziness, you know, which we missed last year, meaning, you know, our players came back, our, our veterans came back this past Tuesday. Uh, so they're in the weight room and conditioning. And then our freshmen, 34 new members of the Penguins, uh, they show up Monday. And then on top of that, we're, we're the dead period's over. So we're back at camps. I got coaches, you know, across the state. I even went and saw my first high school student athlete at an Ohio State camp the other day. In 19 months, that was the first time stepping foot off this campus and, and seeing a high school athlete. We had an opportunity uh, last week to talk to the guy in charge of all the camps going on uh, at Youngstown State University. Coach, it had to have been crazy uh, the fact that you guys were not able to do any camps, not able to see any of the uh, any of the future penguins or what we hope to be future penguins, uh, talk about putting a crimp on on the recruiting uh, trail. Well, that's what we're going to live by is our recruiting and not having those camps. So just to put it, you know, next Monday, June fourteenth, we're going to have eight hundred players on a one day camp with over 50 colleges here at Youngstown state. And that's how, you, that's how we're going to make our living is, is by getting the players from a 300 mile radius, getting them to our campus, getting to work with them, getting to evaluate them and starting to build a relationship. So I'm excited that we're able to do that because that, that's how we're going to build this program. Doug Phillips, Youngstown State University head football coach, joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Okay, so you sat across from me. You and President Tressel sat across from me, uh, I want to say last spring, and, and we were talking about how you wanted to bring in a different culture. Uh, those that must be proud to wear the red and white. You must be proud to have the Y on your helmet. And if you're not proud of that or if you're not interested uh, or all in on the program, you need to leave. Saw a lot of people leaving the program uh, for various reasons. Do you feel like you have a program now with everyone in the same direction in terms of where we want to be as a football program? I think we, we've made great strides going in that direction. I still think, you know, it, it takes a little bit more time to get through that. You're still going to have some hiccups along the way, but I'm certainly excited for all the guys that are coming back this, you know, past uh, Tuesday and where we're headed. Uh, we still got to add a few more players this summer which we're going to and you know we have new faces coming in whether it's freshmen or maybe another grad transfer or or a transfer so you know that's a work in progress i i believe but i'm just i I, i'm excited and happy where where we're going and excited to get working with our kids 
Coach, let's talk about the uh, the spring season. I mean, look, it was a uh, it, it was an interesting season in that you're just playing the conference. Uh, it was for a lot of the kids that had not suited up and and taken part in a Missouri Valley football conference uh, environment. It was a new thing for a lot of those kids, and yeah, it's a wake up call for kids that are just out of high school or kids that had not been on the field yet. Because there's a there's a big difference between high school and college, especially if you go from high school to uh, Division One uh, or FCS college football. There's a there's a huge difference. Can we talk a little bit about the spring? What did what were some of the things that you really liked about this uh, 2021 spring season? Number one, the effort. You know, watching a lot of tape during the quarantine. I wanted to make sure our players were ready to play each and every week with great effort and, and that play hard mentality and the physicality and the toughness that you need week in and week out. And I was proud of our kids' effort, you know, to come each week and be ready to play the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. Now, do we have to learn how to finish some games? We do. You know, I think a lot of that goes back to development and development whether it's in their position groups development whether it's in the weight room development whether it's in nutrition to get bigger and stronger but the attitude and effort that they brought each and every week they're ready to play football Uh, did we have some missteps and blown opportunities we did and we're never going to say we're going to feel good about being close we want to win football games the goal is to win a championship and uh, you you got to set that standard high and you, what you usually do in an off season is reflect back, but you don't have much time to reflect back because the next season's here right now. So, you know, we got to make, we had tough learning experiences, but we learned so much from playing this season. Someone asked me the other day, are you glad you played football games this spring instead of spring football? And, and the, the answer is yes. I mean, we can learn so much from the tape. We learn just who we want to be and what we need to do recruiting to be able to win these football games. So it was a great learning experience. One of the things that I really liked about your team, it was a blue-collar effort, Uh, 60 minutes of of a blue-collar effort. You didn't see any quit uh, in the kids. Uh, The the defense was tough as nails, uh, and and they weren't afraid to uh, dish out some licks when they needed to. And uh, you've got some incredibly young kids on this team, and – you know, I'm I'm with you, Coach. Uh, especially with a team where about half of your kids are either true freshmen or redshirt freshmen. I think that in the long run, this spring season might be might very well have been the best thing that has happened to this program uh, because it sure does beat uh, the the spring practice and and then having your kids go on the field for the first time uh, against the very difficult Missouri Valley Football Conference the fact that these kids got a head start albeit in a spring season I, I think it's going to pay dividends down the road I believe we gained confidence, too. I I believe our kids believed that we can win these football games, that, you know, we come back in the offseason and and develop that offensive line and defensive line even more in that weight room, which in this league, that's the one thing you better have is an experienced, strong and tough up front, O-line, D-line. And we have those players. There's no magic formula. I think we have players in the 203-mile radius of Youngstown, Ohio, that we can recruit, get to this campus that love football, love to be here, want to represent Ohio, Northeast Ohio, Western PA, and and be the tops in this league. I I do believe we can do that, and that's going to be our focus. YSU head football coach Doug Phillips joining me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. One of the things I absolutely loved watching was the growth of the offensive line. They were overpowered the first two games. I mean, look, you're taking on arguably one of the best teams, even though they, they got bounced early in the postseason, arguably one of the best teams in North Dakota State. Uh, you turn around, you have to play another really, really difficult team in the in the uh, Missouri Valley Football Conference. But I thought the steady the steady growth of the offensive line in that spring season uh, that was a, that was definitely a plus, and you saw it with the great running attack that you guys had this spring. 
Yes, and you saw that growth from week one to week two. I think we saw a little bit more when we played Southern Illinois and how we started that game, and we jumped on them by driving the football. Uh, you know, we took a right guard that was a D lineman and, and switched to offense. We had a true freshman at left guard, and we had a red shirt freshman starting at tackle. Uh, but it took some time, but you saw their growth each and every week. And we're trying to define who we are, who do we want to be. And you got to win in the trenches. And now what I'm excited about, you you take those young men now, and now we got to add the strength because that's the one thing. When you go to Missouri Valley, you're playing South Dakota State, those four defensive linemen have been in the weight room for the last four years. And when they graduate, guess what? they got another crew just waiting there that's been training ready to go so we just got to catch up and we got to catch up as fast as we can you know the offensive line the maturation of the line uh presenting some great great things for your running attack boy you guys ran the ball so effectively well uh in the spring uh the running game uh, turned out to be a major plus for this university it always starts with the run game. The first year programs I've been to, you, you gotta you gotta be able to run the football. And I wish the passing game will, would catch up sooner this spring. Uh, I believe it will. I believe we have the quarterbacks to do it. I believe we have the receivers to do it, and we got to be able to put that ball downfield. You know, to take some of the pressure too off that offensive line and our running backs. Because if not, you're just going against seven against nine every play. You know, Mark Wade uh, continued to grow as as a quarterback, and and uh, he did have a couple of really nice games. That you know, the receivers uh, very very inconsistent in that they weren't catching uh, as many passes. I know uh, as a lot of the fans would have liked. I, I can I can imagine that you weren't uh, too happy with with the inconsistency, but certainly the talent is there at at both the quarterback and the wide receivers. Coach, do you think Mark Wade did enough where he is going into camp the number one quarterback, or is this a full-blown, uh, may-the-best-man-win quarterback competition? I still believe it's got to be the – every day has got to be a competition. You know, part of our core principle is competitive edge, is competitive edge, and so that's got to be daily. And at the quarterback position, you know, how do you get better – well, when we brought Jaleel McLaughlin into that running back room, guess what that made every running back? It made them better because they are competing each and every day. And that's what we need every day. You know, whether it's Joe Craycraft competing to, to, to win the job or even the Demetra Crenshaw, who is a highly sought out quarterback that was a freshman and still learning to be able to come in and compete to a Mitch Davidson who you know came from Salem, Ohio, but you got to create that competitiveness every day, and I want them to earn it. You know, part of our thing is you got to go earn it, and sometimes you got to go take it. So the quarterback's going to be the person this summer who goes and takes it. Doug Phillips, the head football coach of the Youngstown State University Penguins, joining me on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. The Portal has been uh, had been open for quite some time with a, a lot of kids looking to transfer from uh, school to school. How busy were you, or how active uh, were you and the coaches looking for some kids to to possibly make the trip to Youngstown, Ohio, and finish their collegiate career or start their collegiate career at Youngstown State? Well, I hope very shortly that we won't live in a, a portal business. Yeah, I believe being in the first year, we had to utilize it. I, I think our veteran players who, who have been here, who saw the transfers come in in December, the one thing they will say is, Coach, you brought in guys that fit well into our locker room, who are hardworking, blue-collar, whether it was a Grant Dixon who made first-team all-league linebacker, to Jaleel McLaughlin, to Drew Ogletree, the tight end. And we found out that what works best for us is finding players maybe at the non-scholarship FCS level or even the Division II that were highly productive that just want to play higher level, higher level football compared to that player that's coming down from the FBS to the FCS. So that worked well for us. 
So we went into this off season trying to utilize that same formula, finding guys that were highly productive at those levels that we know could step in and be in the culture we're trying, the blue collar, hardworking, tough that our kids would accept. And, you know, we, we had a plan and we're still executing that. We had three new young men that are stepping on campus this week. And, you know, we may have another three to four stepping on our campus in the next couple of weeks. When those guys first come on campus, uh, do you sit down and talk with them individually and say, listen, we brought you here for a reason and you have the, uh, you have the coach uh, prepared talk for the incoming freshmen? Do you do it all at once or, or do you just bring them in one at a time and say this is what we expect of you? Well, I think that's done in the recruiting process. You know, when you're, when you're getting close or you really like someone and you've done, you've vetted them, you know, and what I mean by vet, that you've talked to people that either coached them prior to them coming. You do a lot of fact gathering. You do a lot of communications, whether it's, you know, phone calls to text messages, you know, finding out, is this the right fit? So before they even come to campus, you're figuring out, will this be a right fit and can they help this team? You know, it's it's interesting you bring this up. Uh, I, I've been saying this for for a while now. Obviously, the first thing that everyone's going to look at these days are grades because you have to be eligible academically to play. So grades would have to be at the top of the list. But one would think, how do you treat your teammates? How close are you with your family? Uh, what is your body language like on the sidelines? Are you a multi-sport athlete? Are those series of questions some of the high-priority things that you're looking for in a football player, Coach? Yes, all of them, all of them. I believe, you know, at this level, if you struggle keeping your head above water off the field, whether it's, you know, socially, academically, if you struggle, it's really hard to play football and be successful. So you really got to have you you got to be competitive in everything you do, whether it's socially, whether it's in your academics, you know. So when we're looking for the players that can be successful here at Youngstown State, because in the third and fourth quarter you're going against players on other teams that have everything in life in order, and all they're doing is playing football. And if you don't have those things in order, they're going to beat you in the third and fourth quarters. No question about that. YSU head football coach Doug Phillips joining me on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. I think that the the growth of this team is going to be on display this fall. I've been telling people that uh, you can expect a much better Penguins team. And, and the fact that, uh, the, the, as we mentioned earlier, the kids had an opportunity to play this schedule, play a league schedule, uh, and, and now the fact that they don't have their eligibility sapped up so the freshmen that played in the spring are still going to be freshmen in the fall. That extra year of eligibility tacked on with the fact that they played a conference schedule in the spring. I expect this program to uh, to be a whole lot better uh, in the fall. Now, what what does that come to? Wins and losses? Well, that we'll find out in November. Uh, but in a ten game schedule and and looking at the schedule, uh, I can see Youngstown State making a pretty pretty solid jump uh, in the win column this year. Well, it starts with incarnate word, and a lot of people don't know who they are. But trust me, I think they were in the top five passing in the FCS last year, and their quarterback was the player of the year FCS. So. You know, that, that first game's going to be a great challenge. They can throw the football. You know, and then we travel to Michigan State before we even get in, into our conference play. Um, but that's what you want. I, I think when you're recruiting, you know, what, what, what do we have? We have so much to offer here at Youngstown State, not only a great community, a great university, the facilities, but you're going to play the best football programs in the country at the FCS level. So if you want to be good, you want to reach your full potential as a football player, uh, we got that for you. And our kids know that each and every day, and it's great seeing them working out. 
Coach, you have my attention with the final four games of your schedule. Uh, the national runner-up South Dakota State Jackrabbits come to town on October the 30th. You make a trip to North Dakota to take on arguably the surprise team in the spring along with uh, uh, along with Missouri State. North Dakota was uh, just shocked everyone. Uh, you'll make a trip out there on the 6th. The Bison come to town on November the 13th, and then you go to Carbondale uh, in the bottom portion of the state of Illinois to take on the Salukis to close out the season. Boy, those final four games, that that's uh, that's murderer's row, those final four games, Coach. Well, those are all playoff teams, so you kind of look at it that the playoffs start with the South Dakota State game. So our playoffs start a little bit earlier. So, uh, you know, and that's why we got to do a great job in the development and getting our players, you know, physically ready to to play our best football at the end of the year. You know, if you're going to make a run, if you're going to be a great team, you got to play great football at the end of October into November. So that's the challenge that lies ahead. And, you know, that's why that's why we do what we do. We love that. We love that challenge. And we look forward to, to playing those teams and see how much more improvement. You know, if we can get 1% better every day, uh, you know, I, I'm excited to get to those games. You know, I, I have to bring up a couple of things before we let you go. And, again, we're speaking with Youngstown State head football coach Doug Phillips on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. The defense was way, way ahead of the offense early on in the uh, in the spring campaign. I was so impressed with the back seven, uh, your linebackers and the defensive backs. I, I thought those guys were flying around and consistently flying around all during the uh, during the spring portion of the uh, of, of the schedule. Uh, were they graded out as good as I thought they were in in the spring, Coach? Yeah, they they played great. They really did, and and it built confidence as the year went along that you know what we can defend you know the players in this league or the teams in this league the wide receivers in this league which if you know you can defend them with the back seven you can do more up front and so we try to keep it simple but multiple and we're looking at better ways of doing that but what's more exciting is there's some young guys i know zaire jones he'll be playing his last fall but you know our two corners were a true freshman and red shirt freshman uh, you know, linebackers in the middle, Griffin Hoke. I mean, DeMarco Augustin, who plays our Penny, which is our outside linebackers, a redshirt freshman and has tremendous potential. What we got to do now is just build depth. You know, I think at the end of the year, that's where we saw depth. You know, you lose one corner. Okay, who's the next guy up? So, you know, in the off season here, we, we got to build that depth. But we're excited about our whole defense. You know, I think we played 24 freshman or redshirt freshman this past spring which gave a lot of young men opportunities you know on the defensive line you know a local kid Chris Fitzgerald a redshirt freshman Vinny Gentile got a lot of playing time uh, so we're excited uh, where we're headed there defensively yeah and one of the things that you bring up which is a, a theme for Youngstown States uh, you've taken a page out of the Coach Tressel, now President Tressel playbook, and we talked about it when you and, and President Tressel were in the studios. Back in the 90s, President Tressel set a 100-mile radius around the state of Youngstown. You're improving that to a 300-mile radius around the state of Youngstown, but it's the same thing. You want kids that are going to be buying into the blue-collar culture that is northeastern Ohio, that is Youngstown, and, and for many of us that grew up in the steel area, Era when we had the steel mills and the grandfathers and uncles and fathers were taking the you know taking the steel uh, lunch pail to work and and busting their ass in the steel mills uh, that's that blue collar mentality and and that's so refreshing to see that you want to bring that blue collar mentality back because Lord knows. Uh, there's enough kids in a 300-mile radius around the state of Youngstown uh, that are more than willing to be a blue-collar type of football player. And I believe when things get tough, that that's where you need those kids to have great pride. Because when things get tough, you got to keep fighting. And you know, sometimes the the fighters are the ones that grew up in this area, grew up in this region. You know, we're looking for players. A lot of our kids may have not had a lot of offers, but maybe in, in high school, 
you know, I take one, Dylan Woodkey, a, a redshirt freshman who earned the spot at, at defensive end uh, this spring, had a great spring for us. But in high school was maybe 6'3", 215, didn't have a lot of offers out there. But guess what? Now he's 6'3", 250 pounds, and, and plays hard each and every play. So, we've, we, there's again, there's no magic formula. There are young men in the Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Columbus, Akron, Canton, Southern Ohio that are Penguins. And it's our job that I put 10 coaches out there to go find them, to find kids that we are looking for that fit the mold we're trying to build and get them here. And then it's our job to develop them as football players. So that's what gets me excited about June because we're going to have over a 1,000 young men coming to our campus and having us being able to coach them. Uh, those are the future Penguins. And, Coach, it, it, it all goes back to the conversation we had about 15 minutes ago, the fact that you guys are now opening up your camps again. I don't think people realize just how important those camps are. Uh, it's a golden opportunity for you, the coaches, to observe all of these kids. Now, look, there's other college coaches that are going to be at this camp, but it gives you guys an opportunity to see all of these kids and and make inroads with these kids, form relationships, and hopefully bring a good chunk of them to Youngstown. Yeah, and you have you have schools like Indiana, Purdue, Minnesota, Cincinnati that are pushing young men here too because they're going to be at this camp. So they're pushing, and we're all evaluating. We we feel we have some young men we've offered, and it's like, oh, we, we want to keep them hidden. But it's not about keeping them hidden. It's about developing relationships. It's about getting them to buy into what – having – them buy into the vision you have for this program. And it's funny that we all compete, but we'll all bring them onto one campus where we all evaluate. And it's kind of interesting. It's a great opportunity for young men out there. It's a great opportunity for us to evaluate and continue to build that relationship with those that we're recruiting. You know, and speaking of relationships, you've got 45 schools, give or take a few, in Mahoning, Trumbull, and Columbiana counties that constitute the Ohio side of the Mahoning Valley, and we're not even getting into the schools in Mercer, Lawrence, and and uh, Blackhawk, and uh, and Beaver Falls down in Beaver County. But mm-hmm. you know, obviously, you have started the uh, the process of trying to develop as many relationships as possible with all of the high school coaches, and that's so extremely important given the fact that uh, you want to keep as many of these kids that are capable of playing Division I football, you want to keep as many of those kids in the area as humanly possible. Well, I think with this portal, it's even more important. You know, you take a young man that has pride in Youngstown and you develop them. In today's world, they can leave you and transfer anywhere in the country. So I think it's even more important that we, we have those young men that, that take great pride in being at Youngstown State, great pride in representing this valley. So when they are becoming players and you develop them, you can retain them. Because nowadays, you know, you see kids, you see 2,000 young men in the portal thinking the grass is greener somewhere else. So I think it's even more important that we really evaluate those that are around us that, that have tremendous pride in this region. Coach, give everyone a timeline uh, for what you're going to be doing uh, between now and August when you officially open up fall camp. Well, our young men came June 1st, so we get eight week, nine weeks to work them for eight weeks. So they will specifically just be working on strength and conditioning right now, you know, four days a week. Uh, we'll give them a little time off, maybe six, seven days there around July 4th. They'll come back on the campus. We'll finish summer conditioning. You know, we're allowed maybe two hours a week to study film with them. Uh, and then as we get closer, camps August 4th, probably the last Friday in July, we'll give them a long weekend. And then they'll report for camp on Tuesday, uh, August 3rd, and camp gets going August 4th. And, and we get going September the 2nd when YSU takes on Incarnate Word. And uh, you made mention how good their uh, their throwing attack is. The the back seven will be busy on September the 2nd for sure, Coach. Yes, they will. That will be a great challenge. But our guys look forward to that. 
you know, again, that part of our principles, do we want great effort, great attitude? We do. But then the next piece is that competitiveness. We want someone that wants to compete in everything they do. And how do you compete? Find the best, go out on the field, and see who wins and who loses. Hey, you got a secret weapon in terms of putting weight on, because I've been saying it for years. Look, I've lived in eight different states, including Ohio. Our pizza, I'll put it up against anybody. So uh, I think that's your secret weapon for recruiting. Tell these kids, hey, if you like pizza, not only are you going to be playing for an FCS championship caliber football program, you're also going to get also going to be getting the best pizza around, and we can put weight on you like that because you'll be eating all kinds of pizza. That's part of our recruiting play that we got the best pizza in the country. And, you know, the one thing I, I try, you know, the feed, we got to feed an army every day. So this summer I got to feed an army every day. I got 110 kids that you, you got to find a way to feed them. And the one thing they do is every, you know, we, we'll provide them a meal uh, at four days a week. And it usually comes from great restaurants in this area. Great. Italian food, great pizza, and, and we pre- the one thing Youngstown in the Valley has is, is great resources, great support. So we appreciate all those that help. Coach, how, how, how much are you looking forward to have every seat available at Stambaugh Stadium? Because I know how difficult it was with limited seat capacity. And, you know, the people, uh, you know, it's dead of winter, early spring. Some folks, the Fairweather fans, didn't necessarily want to show up. And you didn't have the tailgating lot. How great is it going to be on September the 2nd to have a full tailgate lot, hopefully a full stadium at Stambaugh, and just a raucous atmosphere? I mean, that's what you work for. You know, football, you work 300 and, you know, 64 days a year, 65, on, you know, the leap year years. But, you know, to play 10 football games, you know, to, you, you work you work as hard as you can to play those 10 games. And when you play those games, to, to have the support, to hear the bands, to feel the atmosphere outside of the stadium, to hear the crowd roar. And we want to put a great product on that field, and we want to represent who we are in this valley. You know, for us, I want people to know that's what we work for. That's what we did this morning at 6 a.m. when our team was out on the stadium competing today in, in teams that, that we're fighting, and, and we want to represent them and to have their support. You know, we love it. Coach, I got the red the uh, red polo shirt on with the uh, Youngstown State emblem. I'm fired up for the season. Uh, I, I can't wait for it to go. Although I, I do love me some summer, so we'll we'll patiently wait. But uh, the the eyes are definitely looking forward to September second when we open up the season. And I can't thank you enough for for coming on board. Uh, look forward to chatting with you real soon about the uh, about the season, Coach. Anytime, Ron. Enjoy summer. All right. You as well, sir. Doug Phillips, the head football coach of the Youngstown State University Penguins. Man, I'm fired up for that season. I think this team is going to take a gigantic step forward. Look, you may not... You may not have okay uh, eight and two, seven and three. Uh, Maybe we get the back door into the playoffs. Look, I think if this team can go one win to five or six wins... That's a, that's a damn good uh, start because you got to remember there's a lot of red shirt freshmen and true freshmen on this team. And I'll repeat what I've been saying for a while. I think that the best thing that could have possibly happened for those freshmen and this program was to have that spring season. I think that that, that was so much more important than just playing spring football and then having these kids getting that first time look at what is the best conference in FCS football. I think the fact that these kids were able to play in that rough FCS conference known as the Missouri Valley Football Conference, it gave everybody a wake-up call and now everyone knows what the bar is and how high the bar is, and where you're going to have to be in order to be a team that is consistently there, year in, year out, playoff worthy, ready to make a run for a possible national championship. And 
It may not happen this fall. Uh, you, you know, I, I again, I think those so many freshmen. This is a building thing. I think this team is probably one year away uh, from making some serious noise. But you know what? There's so much talent on this team. Uh, you might see that jump, and you might see this team getting uh, getting to the promised land, aka the FCS playoffs, a year early. Uh, there is some serious talent on both sides of the ball at Youngstown State. It's just a matter of, all right, let's get these kids matured and let's get these kids ready to go. And and I, they got the right guy for the job. I think Doug Phillips was a tremendous hire by President Trussell, uh, by Ron Strollo in the university. And I, I think they got the right guy for the job. And I honestly believe this program is headed in the right direction. I uh, cannot wait for the uh, game against Incarnate Word on uh, September the 2nd. I believe that is on a uh, Thursday. It's on a Thursday night at Stambaugh Stadium. And again, <clears throat> I'm just hoping to see a full tailgate lot, a full stadium or somewhat full stadium, and not have a limit on the amount of fans that you're allowed to have uh, at the stadium. I am so looking forward to normalcy in the game of football, and and this is going to be an awful lot of fun. Ten-game season. It all begins on Thursday night, September the 2nd. Youngstown State taking on Incarnate Word at 7 o'clock. You know I'll be there in the tailgate lot uh, with the pregame show uh, or the uh, uh, the tailgate lot show uh, leading into the pregame show, and then I'll be on the air doing the fifth quarter show after the YSU game. It is going to be an absolute blast uh, doing YSU football again this year. All right, take a time out. Be back with more. It is a Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Every customer has a story, and at Greenwood Chevrolet, we are committed to making sure it ends with you in the right vehicle. I get to be part of somebody's adventure, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their finances. They trust me to take care of them, and they trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. Jimmy Sutman here, director of Isle, Purple Cat, and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours, because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. 
Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. This is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student athletes in the Valley. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your pre-owned vehicle and much more. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their pre-owned vehicle at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Ron Potesta with you. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Saw a first last night uh, in the NBA. First time in LeBron James' playoff career in which he exited in the first round. First time ever. Uh, When you consider all of the teams that LeBron James had in Cleveland prior to the NBA title team of 2016 with Kyrie Irving Irving and, and Kevin Love, all of those teams, the first time LeBron was around not a whole lot of talent he never lost in a first round playoff series to put this in proper perspective Michael Jordan lost three times in his first three years with the Chicago Bulls in the first round he had lost three times in the first round LeBron James just did that for the first time in NBA, in his NBA postseason career. Uh, LeBron and the Lakers bounced by uh, the Phoenix Suns, and they got questions over there. And look, LeBron's not getting any younger. Their uh, father time is undefeated, and he's undefeated for a reason. Uh, sooner or later, you're not going to be anywhere close to the guy that you used to be. And, and look, the end is a lot closer uh, for LeBron James than, uh, than the beginning. I can promise you that. Uh, but for the first time, he, get boun- he gets bounced in the first round of the playoffs. Here's another interesting nugget. This is going to be the first time in 11 years, the first time since 2010 where either LeBron James or the Golden State Warriors are not in the NBA Finals. This is truly a changing of the guard in the National Basketball Association where I'm not saying that LeBron is done. I'm not saying that he's never going to win another championship. I think that there is that possibility. But in order for the Lakers to win another title, they're going to have to get a whole lot better because it's got to be, first of all, LeBron's no longer the focal point of that team. The unibrow is. 
Uh, he's that mantle's been taken away from LeBron. He could still do some things, but he is nowhere near the caliber of player that he was the first or second time he came back from Cleveland. His yeah, his shelf life isn't much longer uh, in terms of playing great basketball. Uh, there's there's not much longer for LeBron James when it comes to great basketball. Uh, his his shelf life uh, from great to good uh, is a lot quicker than than what people think. But uh, yeah, that's the first time that LeBron's been bounced in the first round of the playoffs, and this will be the first time in eleven years that LeBron James or the Golden State Warriors won't be in the NBA Finals. That is an amazing statistic, uh, courtesy of Sam Amico, uh, who does such an amazing job with the NBA. So uh, there you go with that. Uh, Take with it what you want. Uh, I'll be curious to see uh, what they do in the offseason. Look, I mean, if uh, Cavaliers have their own uh, uh, issues going on, uh, where they're going to be drafting, uh, what they have to do with, uh, with their team, Although I, I will certainly say their situation is nowhere near as bad as some of the folks would indicate it. Uh, I, I think a lot of folks are missing a very key element uh, with the Cavaliers last year, and that's the fact that everyone and their brother was hurt. And the starting five did not show up on the court all that often. Uh, th- this was a um, th- this was a team that if they had been healthy, I'm convinced they would have been a playoff team or at least gone into the play-in game. But I'm convinced they would have been a top eight team uh, had they been healthy. Unfortunately, nobody was healthy. And look, and the end of the at the end of the day, nobody's going to be stupid enough to take Kevin Love's contract. Cavaliers are are going to be uh, with that albatross. Uh, it's just look. I mean, uh, that contract is is going to be a part of the Cavaliers for the next couple of years. You hope that Kevin Love is going to be able to not have a uh, not have an injury plagued year in two thousand twenty one two thousand twenty two. Uh, and if that's the case, then maybe, just maybe, someone would pick him up, given the fact that he would have one year left on his deal. Uh, but, you know, a lot, of un- a lot of questions. A lot of questions with this team. I still think Dylan Windler uh, is someone that could be a very important piece to the Cavaliers. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, as we were talking about the NBA, uh, LeBron getting bounced for the first time ever in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, that happened last night. And I'll be curious to see what happens uh, as the Lakers uh, move forward. All right, the Indians are in Baltimore taking on the Orioles. This is a place that the Indians have really not done well uh, the last few years. Baltimore has has kicked Cleveland's ass uh, in Baltimore the last couple of years. Hopefully the uh, the Indians will be able to take care of business. Uh, Baltimore comes into this game riding a two-game winning streak after breaking a 14-game losing streak. Uh, they are 19-37 and 37 on the campaign. The Indians are three games in back of Chicago, two back in the loss column at 30 wins and 24 losses. The Tribe is officially a third of the way through the 2021 campaign. They're a third of the way through. Now consider this. The defense is horrendous. No two ways about that. The Indians' defense is horrendous. The Indians have had little to no production at first base, and unfortunately there's not much help on the farm because Bobby Bradley stinks uh, down in AAA Columbus, and that's why he's still in AAA Columbus. Your outfield is a mess. And, well, Bradley Zimmer may very well, if he stays healthy, he may very well be the guy that sneaks in the back door and becomes the center fielder for the Cleveland Indians, moving Harold Ramirez to a corner spot. Uh, Look, but the outfield is an absolute mess. So you have a bad defensive team. You have a bad first base position from an offensive standpoint. Your outfield is a mess. Your starting pitching is a mess. It's, It's not deep. 
And yet this team is on pace right now, a third of the way through the season. This team is on pace to win 90 games and be a playoff team. If Terry Francona is not the greatest manager the Cleveland Indians have had since Lou Boudreau, I don't know who the hell is. And please spare me the Mike Hargrove comments because he isn't. Terry Francona is way better than Mike Hargrove ever was as the manager of the Cleveland Indians. And Grover was a pretty decent manager. Tito's way better. It is amazing what this team is doing with what little talent they have on the major league club. And, oh, by the way, friend Mel Reyes is out for another month and change. So there goes your pop. (laughs) It's amazing what this team is doing. Uh, And here's the scary part. They might win this division. Listen, I'm just saying they might win this division. Here is a name that I think everyone needs to uh, to – listen to and to remember uh it's no secret that we're about a month away a couple of months end of july early august is the uh, is the trade deadline there's a guy out in seattle and and let's be honest the mariners uh, they're not going to be doing anything uh the mariners are below 500 they're four and a half games out of first place uh they're a mediocre team they're probably not going to be going anywhere There is a guy in Seattle that has pop in his bat. He plays a good corner outfield position, and he only makes $5 million a year, and he's got this year and next year on his contract, and I would love to have this guy in an Indians uniform, and if the Indians are close or if they're in playoff contention, do not be a bit surprised if the Cleveland Indians acquire Mitch Haniger from the Seattle Mariners. It makes perfect sense. And this guy can flat out play. Uh, He was an all-star in 2018 uh, when I covered the all-star game for Clear Channel when the game was in Washington. Uh, He is one of my favorite players. He is a guy that outside of Seattle, hardly anyone knows him. But believe me when I tell you, around baseball circles, this guy is a very good baseball player. And if... If the Indians are within striking distance, I don't think there's any question, uh, given the payroll and how low the payroll is, I don't think there's any question that the Indians will go after some guys, guys that make sense, and I don't think there's any question that they will uh, do whatever it takes to, uh, to get it done. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, again, the fact of the the fact that this team right now is thirty and twenty four, a third of the way through the season, on pace to go ninety and seventy two, with what little talent they have offensively as well as defensively, and with what little depth they have in the starting rotation, absolutely mind numbing, what the Indians are doing, absolutely mind numbing. All right, Pirates lost, or I should say they beat the Marlins last night. Uh, they're now 21-34. and 34. Uh, They are a little over the, the, uh, the halfway mark, or the, a little over the, the third mark of the uh, 2021 campaign. They're already 11 and a half games in back. Uh, I'm sorry, 11 games in back of the uh, Chicago Cubs. Uh, it, look, we said it was a rebuilding year for the Pirates. Let's see what they have. Uh, Key Brian Hayes got off the uh, disabled list. Good to see Key Brian Hayes uh, back in the lineup. We'll see what the uh, what the Bucks can do. Uh, you know, I mean, they got some good pieces. They have some good pieces. They they got rid of some uh, some veterans that. Uh, that were not going to be around uh, when this team was going to be good again. And I think that they're ready, uh, or they will be ready, in a couple of years to make a, uh, make a solid run. I think they will be ready in a couple of years. But it's just a matter of the fact that this team, they have to get the minor league system percolating. Uh, and part of that is they had to get some better prospects. Uh, I had said... As much as I like Neil Huntington, 
there were a couple of things that that Huntington did. I mean, he gambled uh, when he traded away, uh, you, you know, that deal to bring Chris Archer to uh, to Pittsburgh. He traded away some pretty good talent. And unfortunately, that gamble uh, failed miserably. Where Chris Archer uh, never really, never really uh, lived up to form, and and the Pirates got rid of some damn good talent. So that gamble pretty much cost Huntington his job. And you know, I thought Neil was okay prior to that gamble, but I thought the real issue with the Pirates was their their minor league system and their scouting department was garbage. Uh, it, it was Their farm director was clueless. Uh, the, the people within the minor league system were clueless. Uh, and when Ben Charrington took this program over, he, he got rid of all those people. And he's brought in some folks that know what the hell they're doing in the minor league system. And their farm system is getting better. Uh, they got more kids uh, after a couple of good deals. Uh, traded Josh Bell away. Got some pretty good talent from the from the Nationals. Now, again, uh, their their system has gotten stronger. Uh, they are now borderline top ten minor league farm system. Uh, and now you sit back and you hope and pray that the kids that they have are going to start percolating uh, in the farm system. Uh, the Pirates have the first pick overall in the 2021 MLB draft, which will be uh, All-Star Week uh, in Denver, Colorado. Uh, and we'll see what the Bucks do. By the way, speaking of uh, the draft, uh, Major League Baseball Draft League, scrappers were rained out last night against uh, Frederick. They'll play tonight in Frederick. They'll take a trip overnight, come back home early Saturday morning, get some rest, and open up a two-gamer with State College Saturday night at 7.05 and Sunday at 4.05. Uh, 500 kids, first 500 kids to the ballpark are going to get a youth jersey courtesy of Armstrong. Uh, that is tomorrow at 7.05. Oh, by the way, the fireworks display that was to have been shot off a week ago when the Scrappers game against Frederick was postponed, uh, those fireworks are going to be shot off uh, after the game tomorrow night. And it's going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous evening and a, just a great weekend uh, in the Mahoning Valley. So definitely come on out, support the Scrappers. Get your tickets by uh, calling the Scrappers box office, 330-505-0000. That's 330-505-0000. Or you can go online, mvscrappers.com. That's M V S C. R-A-P-P-E-R-S, mvscrappers.com. 7.05 game on Saturday, and then 4.05 on Sunday. Every Sunday matters. If you bring uh, two or three cans with you to the ballpark, two or three canned goods, you'll get a free general admission ticket. Uh, bring two or three canned goods, or you can bring a brand-new kid's book. You get a general admission ticket uh, to the game on Sunday. Final game of a very short two-game series with State College, and then the Scrappers are back on the road uh, all of next week. We will not see the Scrappers until, I believe, uh, the following weekend, uh, it's, uh, or the middle of the week. Uh, it's going to be, uh, what is it, next Tuesday. Uh, not that not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, uh, the Scrappers will be back in town. Uh, after the brief two-game series with with State College. Scrappers are playing well. Uh, they had lost the two games uh, against West Virginia, uh, but they, they turned around and they uh, they blew out uh, they blew out uh, Frederick in the uh, first game of their what was supposed to be a three-game series. It's now going to be a uh, two-game series uh, because last night's game was postponed. And uh, the Scrappers are uh, right now, as we you know, look at the standings, the Scrappers are 7-2. and two. Uh, They are a game better than Williamsport. Six wins, three losses, one tie. West Virginia has three ties. Now keep in mind if if you are if you have not heard the draft league is not playing extra inning games. Uh they do not want 
any potential problems with the uh, pitching or or anyone for that matter. This is this is a league in which you want to have the players put their best foot forward. You gotta you gotta improve your draft stock. This is a league in which you want to play nine innings. And if you can't solve anything after nine innings, well then it's a tie ball game. West Virginia has three wins, three losses, and three ties right now. That's amazing. State College is four and four. Uh, Trenton has three wins, four losses, one tie. Frederick is still looking for their first win of the season. No wins, seven losses, and one tie. Their tie with West Virginia. Trenton's tie with West Virginia. Williamsport tie, you guessed it, West Virginia. Uh, so the Scrappers at seven and two. Uh, they have the best record right now. They're four and zero at Eastwood Field, three and two on the road as they close out their series with Frederick tonight, and then they'll open up a very brief two-game series with the four and four State College Spikes uh, tomorrow night at seven o five, Sunday afternoon at four o five. Hope to see you at. Uh, Eastwood Field in Niles for Scrappers Baseball. And again, get your tickets. Uh, Every ticket is now available. Uh, Being that the COVID ban is now lifted, every seat is available at Eastwood Field. So get your tickets by contacting the Scrappers box office, 330-505-0000, or you can go online, mvscrappers.com. All right, yesterday... Uh, Canton McKinley fired their head football coach uh, as well as six assistant coaches. I don't know if anyone saw this or not. This is this is a crazy story uh, that I can't even begin to tell you how stupid the coaching staff was for this. Long story short, during a voluntary workout, one of their kids apparently missed one of the voluntary practices. And the coaching staff was a little pissed off at the kid uh, because he missed the practice. Keep in mind, it is voluntary. Now, listen, I've been around sports forever and a day. And I've been around high school, college, and pro sports. I understand that voluntary on the surface means you can choose to go if you want to, choose not to go if you want to. The reality is voluntary is code for get your butt here if you're in high school or college. If you want to leg up on the competition, you need to go to practice even if it is voluntary. Let me back over here. Voluntary. Having said that, kid misses the practice. Coaches go out of their mind. So the coaches throw out a, or put in front of this kid, allegedly put in front of this kid an entire pepperoni pizza and tell this kid, you got to eat this pizza or you're not playing for us. And oh, by the way, these kids are going to run if you don't eat this pizza. Here's the problem. The player in question, Orthodox Jewish. Now, for those that are not familiar with the Orthodox Jewish religion, Orthodox Jews are forbidden to eat pork products. So the coaching staff was to tell an Orthodox Jewish kid, you got to eat a pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni is pork. It's a no-go. The kid tried to explain to the coaches, hey, can't eat this. It's got pork in it. Can't eat it. Allegedly, the coaches told the kid, pick the pepperoni out and eat the pizza, or you're not going to be playing football for us. Obviously, that went over like a fart in church. Yes, pun intended. From what I understand, the family's attorney has already filed a lawsuit 
against Canton McKinley. Don't know if that's going to go uh, very far, given the fact that, again, Canton McKinley yesterday, last night, fired the head coach and fired the six assistant coaches that took part in what can only be described as the single most moronic thing I think a coach has done uh, in, in recent memory. It, it Not only is it offensive from from a standpoint of forcing a kid to do something that's against his religious beliefs. But we'll go back to the voluntary thing. And again, I understand voluntary is not necessarily voluntary. But the word exists for a reason. Look, a kid, you can't force a kid to go to a voluntary workout, hence the term voluntary. Now, it's understood if you don't go to a voluntary workout and you fall behind when the workouts are now mandatory, hey, that's on you. You didn't show up for the voluntary workout. That's on you. One of the reasons why, and I'll switch to basketball, one of the reasons why it is so important for kids to show up for open gym is because you want to have those kids ready for when you start playing basketball, when the practices become mandatory on the 1st of November. If the kids show up at open gym and you're practicing during open gym, The kid's going to know what to expect come November when you open up the gym and the practices are now mandatory. So I understand the voluntary workout. Listen, it's voluntary, but you better damn well show up if you want to have a starting position or if you want to be part of this football program. But the word is still there. It's voluntary. You can't force a kid to go to a voluntary workout. And you can't sit back and tell a kid, hey, you missed a voluntary workout. You got to eat this pizza. And if you don't, you're not playing for us. And we really don't care that this pizza has pepperoni on it. And the fact you're Orthodox Jewish and the fact that you're not allowed to eat pork, we really don't care. This is a pizza. You got to eat it. The single most moronic thing I have ever seen in my life. I I have no words for the stupidity that anyone would do. Uh, Good Lord, if this was my kid, not only would this guy be fired, he'd have his ass kicked too. That's ridiculous. Ugh. So McKinley did the right thing. I mean, they, they got rid of the, the head coach. They got rid of the knuckleheads that were uh, that were also in, in charge of this. I, good Lord, how stupid can you be? My goodness. So that's what uh, went on <laughs> went on last night. I was reading this a couple of days ago, and I was like, there's no way this story's true. I can't believe there, there, there could be possibly be a coach. I would hope. We would not have a coach that stupid in the Mahoning Valley. I would certainly hope that we don't. And if we do, it's embarrassing. But I don't think we do. I, I, I know most, if not all, of these coaches. None of them are that stupid. Good Lord, what an ignorant thing to do. So that's what went on over there. They, uh, they just said, uh, originally they were suspending them, and they were like, no. Listen, you can't get up from this. I mean, this is just the epitome of stupidity. We got to get rid of them. There's nothing. You can't get up from this stupidity. You got to get rid of them and start over again. So McKinley is going to have to bring in a head coach this late. Keep in mind, we are. uh, What the hell are we? Hang on a second. We're in June. uh, Three. Eight. We're 11 weeks away from the start of the 2021 high school football season. Because the football season begins on uh, the, for the first Friday. It's 11 weeks from today. Canton McKinley is looking for a new head football coach 
11 weeks from the start of the 2021 high school football season. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Anyway, uh, 11 weeks from today, 11 weeks from yesterday, actually, because there are some games uh, that are going to be played on Thursday, uh, the 19th of August. And one of those games is going to be Canfield in Poland. Uh, The Pavlansky boy is going to go do battle. God, I can't wait to see that. (laughs) That is going to be a blast. Uh, I believe Crestview is playing Salem on that Thursday night at, at Rebel Stadium. Uh, as well, uh, and and I'm I'm sure there's a, a more than a handful of games that are going to be taking place. Eleven weeks from yesterday, we start the high school football season. Uh, we sit back and and uh, how fast does this calendar go once we hit Memorial Day? Maybe because all of us love summer, or at least I know I do. Love summer, absolutely love summer. Love the warm weather. Uh, as long as the humidity is not way, way up there, uh, I absolutely love the warm weather. Uh, but, man, it goes so fast. It does. It goes so incredibly fast. And then you've got football season before you know it. And, look, it's going to be busy because we're going to be busy uh, all over the place around these parts. I mean, we got so many teams uh, on the brick wall that we're going to be uh, we're going to be dealing with. And, again, football season starts 11 weeks from yesterday. Uh, it's it's amazing how fast uh, time flies. Before you know it, kids are going to be going back to school again. And hell, some of them are still in school. Oh, and by the way, in 11 weeks, you're going to be going back to school, even though you're still in school. Yeah, good luck with that one. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo, heating and air conditioning hotline, open for business. We'll take a time out, be back with more. It is a Friday edition. Phone lines are open, MP Vivo, heating and air conditioning hotline, open for business, 330-886-0813. It's a Friday edition of Running Point, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Every customer has a story, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. By giving you confidence in your vehicle with the Greenwood Advantage Warranty. By guaranteeing you financing, regardless of your situation or credit history. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we do whatever it takes to go the extra mile. So, how can we go the extra mile for you? Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. 
Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. If you're looking for a new Ford vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of new Ford models. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your new Ford. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their new Ford at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Friday edition of Running Points on uh, this absolutely gorgeous Friday in the Mahoning Valley. And uh, now that Mother Nature has uh, moved everything back to where we're going to have a really, really busy uh, day of sports uh, going on right now as we speak, Warren JFK is uh, about ready to take on Columbia High School out of Columbia Station. Uh, that's a 130 game in uh, the D4 tournament up in Strongsville. Uh, if Kennedy wins that game, they will play the winner of the Matthews Tiffin Calvert game. Matthews and Tiffin Calvert is set to begin at 4:30 uh, this afternoon. Matthews and Tiffin Calvert at 4:30 this afternoon. Uh, that is in the D4 regional semifinals from Strongsville High School. Now, should Matthews and Warren JFK both win, there is talk of having that regional championship game moved into the Mahoning Valley. Now, had they played yesterday, had Mother Nature not had the heavy rains uh, which caused the cancellation, had they uh, both won yesterday, that game would have been played at Bob Seen Park in Struthers. Unfortunately, uh, Bob Seen Park is going to be used this weekend. So uh, the, the ballpark and the facilities at Bob Seen Park are not available uh, for Saturday. So uh, I have no idea uh, if uh, JFK and Matthews both win. I have no idea where they would play this game. They, they may very well uh, keep it in Strongsville and play the game. But it's a 12 noon start on Saturday, uh, but obviously JFK and Matthews both have to win uh, in order for us to worry about where that, uh, where that regional championship game uh, would be played. Uh, but JFK getting set to take on uh, Columbia Station, and that game should be getting underway very, very shortly if it hasn't already. Uh, Division Three South Range is going to be taking on Gilmore Academy. Uh, that game is going to take place at 5 o'clock. This afternoon at 2 o'clock, Burton Berkshire is playing Canton Central Catholic. Uh, that is going to be at Maslin, uh, at Maslin Washington High School, home of uh, the Maslin Tigers. Uh, so Burton Berkshire is taking on Canton Central Catholic, uh, the winner of that game takes on the winner of the South Range Gates Mills Gilmore Academy game again South Range in action today at five o'clock should South Range win they would play the title game I I'm assuming they're gonna play the title game at two although it makes more sense 
if the game were to be at five, and I say that because the South Range girls are going to be playing Johnstown Monroe Friday morning at 10 a.m. in the Division Three state semifinals. Actually, that's I'm sorry, uh, tomorrow at 12.30. It was supposed to be today at 10 a.m., uh, but because Mother Nature did what she did yesterday, uh, the Reigns forced the uh, the state playoffs to be moved back a couple of days. Division one and Division four are playing today. They were supposed to have played yesterday. Unfortunately, they weren't able to because of the rainout. Uh, so D one and D four are playing today. D two and D three state semifinals are tomorrow. South Range will play Johnstown Monroe at twelve thirty uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, And that game was switched uh, because uh, South Range has graduation ceremonies on Saturday morning. Now, why they would have South Range boys play at 2 o'clock instead of 5 o'clock is beyond me. I mean, it it makes more sense. Uh, And again, assuming South Range wins, which is a big assumption, uh, if they were to knock off Gates Mills Gilmore Academy they should play that game at 5 o'clock because it would give the South Range faithful an opportunity to watch the girls play Johnstown Monroe at 12.30 on Saturday afternoon in Akron, and then those people can make the drive from Akron to Maslin, about a half an hour, and you'd have plenty of time to get over there and watch South Range play in a regional championship game. Again, if South Range wins today, if South Range doesn't win today, then, frankly, nobody gives a crap around here when the regional championship game is played on on Saturday because none of the local teams uh, will be left. Uh, we can tell you there were some uh, some games in Division Three that were played. Uh, Wheelersburg was shut out by Minford in the Region Eleven uh, regional semifinals, uh, so uh, they were shut out today or yesterday, two to nothing. So Minford moves into the regional championship game. Meanwhile, Region 10, which is South Range's um, regional, uh, the regional champs in Region 9 will take on the winner of Region 10. Region 10 played both of their games. Uh, Archbald knocked off Milan Edison three to nothing, or I'm sorry, three to two. Uh, so Archbold is in the uh, regional championship game where they're going to play Baltimore Liberty Union, who knocked off Pemberville Eastwood four to one. Uh, so 21 and 11 Archbold is taking on 16 and six Baltimore Liberty Union this afternoon at five o'clock for a regional championship. Uh, that is the only region uh, that was able to play yesterday uh, without Mother Nature interfering. The rest, uh, except for one game in, uh, what was it, Region uh, 11, where Wheelersburg was shut out by Minford, who is now 24-2. and uh, Minford is going to be taking on the winner of uh, Barnesville and Fredericktown. That game is uh, today at 5 o'clock. Uh, the regional championship game is Saturday at 12 noon. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, but that's in Division Three. Again, South Range plays today at 5 o'clock against Gilmore Academy. If they win, apparently they're playing on Saturday at 2. Obviously, I think Saturday at 5 is a much better time. Uh, again, the kids could go to their graduation. Then they can go see the South Range girls play uh, and head over to Maslin and win a regional championship. Uh, But that's in Division 3. Division 2, we are guaranteed a team in the regional championship. Uh, Salem is going to be playing Canfield today. That is a 2 o'clock start, and that game is going to be played at Canton Glen Oak High School. The winner of the Salem-Canfield game is going to get the winner of Archbishop Hoban and Chagrin Falls. Akron Hoban and Chagrin Falls will begin at about 5 o'clock this afternoon from Canton Glen Oak High School. Uh, The regional championship game is tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. So whoever wins today's game between Salem and Canfield, and that game is going to be starting in about 20 minutes, uh, whoever wins that game is going to be in the regional championships 
tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. from Canton Glen Oak High School. Uh, it'll be the winner of Canfield Salem taking on the winner of Akron Hoban and Chagrin Falls. And we certainly wish the best of luck to uh, Salem, Canfield, South Range, uh, Warren JFK, and Matthews. Best of luck to those five teams. We're guaranteed to have one team in the regional championship. Hopefully, we get three more teams uh, into the regional championships. Uh, again, Saturday morning, or Saturday afternoon, I beg your pardon, South Range girls will be playing Johnstown Monroe. That is going to be at 1230 in the state semifinal game. If South Range wins that game, they would take on the winner of Sherwood, Fairview, and Wheelersburg for a state championship on Sunday afternoon, June the 6th at 4 p.m. All right, so there you go. You're updated uh, with everything going on uh, with high school football, or high school football, good Lord, with high school baseball and with high school softball as well. Hey, it is a uh, anniversary of sorts. Uh, it is a 47th anniversary for one of the strangest and ultimately uh, one of the stupidest promotions to ever come down the pike in Major League Baseball. Happy 47th anniversary to 10 Cent Beer Night. Ah, yes. June 4th, 1974, Cleveland Municipal Stadium. I was a nine-year-old kid listening to Joe Tate and Herb Score talk about this particular game. Uh, the Genesis, I don't even know who came up with this idea. They did it twice, by the way, because the first time was so great uh, that they decided to do it again later in the season. The marketing department there, oh, my God. Not only was the baseball god-awful in the 70s, the marketing department, woof, came up with this doozy. Uh, you had the following. Come into the ball game. Now, keep in mind, uh, bleacher seats back then were 50 cents. Believe it or not, at the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium, bleacher seats were 50 cents back then. I remember uh, paying like 50 cents or a, a buck in the, in the mid-late 70s to watch Cleveland play Kansas City with my older brothers and my father. Uh, where beer was involved in that game, too. I'll, I'll tell that story in a little bit. But 47 years ago today at Cleveland Stadium, the Texas Rangers came into town uh, to take on the Indians. Now, a little backstory about the Rangers-Indians rivalry. Billy Martin was the manager of the Cleveland Indi or, uh, He was the manager of the Texas Rangers back then. The final game of the Cleveland, Texas series down in Arlington featured an, a bench-clearing brawl involving Lenny Randall, who was playing for the Texas Rangers. Cleveland's starting pitcher threw behind him, and in the very next at-bat, Randall tried to bunt his way on. He bunted it to the first base side of the mound. The pitcher picked up the ball. Randall was running up the first base line and then made a left-hand turn and jacked the pitcher up. I mean, he just jacked him up something bad. Knocked him to the ground. I mean, he knocked him silly. Gave him a just gave him all kinds of grief. It was a if if in football terms it would be a running start to block a guy and knock him on his keister. I mean, and he hit him hard. And as he was coming to first base, Lenny Randall was met by the then first baseman of the Cleveland Indians. And it wasn't Boog Powell, but it was someone who was pretty big. I can't remember who the name of the guy was, but essentially Lenny Randall got choke slammed, and that started a melee. Uh, I mean, a, a professional bench clearing brawl, fisticuffs, guys punching each other in the face. It was, it was big time. This was a big-time brawl between uh, Cleveland and Texas. Guys were coming out of that brawl with a black eye, a, a busted lip, uh, blood, uh, the whole nine yards. And then after the game, you know, somebody asked, hey, next weekend, you guys are in Cleveland. Are you afraid of retribution? And Billy Martin said, well, pff, those guys don't even have enough fans uh, to, to bring retribution. I ain't worried. 
Oh, boy. Hence, 10 cent beer night at the stadium. So the deal was anyone 18 years of age or older, keep in mind, uh, this was long before they decided to jack the, uh, the, the drinking age to 19 and then 21 years of age. So anyone 18 years of age or older had to show their ID. And then for 10 cents, you got a 12-ounce cup of Genesee beer. Now, for those wondering, Genesee beer, um, not great. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not, how do I put this nicely? It is not top shelf beer. It isn't. It's not as good as, say, Yingling or Budweiser or Michelob or some of the other really tasty beers. But Genesee is, you know, I mean, it's a, it was a sponsor of Cleveland Indians baseball back in the day. And Genesee still has their brewing company in Rochester, New York. But it wasn't all that great a beer. Anyway, 10 cents gets you a 12-ounce cup of beer. Unlimited. You can go to the beer vendor as often as you wanted to, as long as you had 10 cents. You had people going to the ballpark. You, you remember those the, the uh, rolls of dimes? You could get $5 worth of, uh, of dimes in, in one of those green rolls. You know, like you put the dimes all in that thing, and, and you and you punch both sides. To, you close both sides, and and you can basically get a five dollar bill and uh, drop this off to to uh, to a store or change it to, for five dollars. Yeah, people came to Cleveland that night with five dollar rolls of dimes, ready to party. Ten cents got you a twelve ounce Genesee beer. There were people that were inebriated by the by the time the national anthem started. And obviously, during the course of the game, people were drunk out of their minds. And people started running on the field. Now, back in the 70s, there was a uh, there was an interesting thing that people used to do that was kind of funny, but yeah. Not really uh, supposed to be a public thing. Uh, it was streaking. For whatever reason, people uh, thought it was funny to have someone run down the street or run uh, in, in a public place with no clothes on. Naked from head to toe. So there were a couple of people that had enough alcohol in them that they decided that they wanted to run across the field buck naked. Okay, there was a father and son duo that decided, hey, we're going to run out to center field and we're going to moon everybody. Pulled the pants down and okay. Uh, There was a woman who wanted to kiss the home plate umpire. So she ran out onto the field, obviously inebriated and tried to kiss the home plate umpire. I know it was somewhat comical, but then the angry drunks started coming into play. And that's when things got a little crazy. About the fifth, sixth inning, the angry drunks started to, uh, started to play, mainly because the Indians were getting beat by Texas. I think they were, they were getting shut out or they were down by five runs. So then you started having guys and gals throw stuff from old Cleveland Municipal Stadium and whiz it by a couple of the outfielders. Uh, I believe Mike Hargrove was a Texas Ranger uh, during the uh, during this melee. He was playing at first base. Somebody threw a bottle that missed his head by about this far. And then you're like, okay, now stuff is getting really starting to get out of hand. Just starting to get out of hand. About the seventh or eighth inning. Uh, things got progressively worse. And, and then the Indians turned around, tied the ball game. I think it was like 5-5 into the ninth inning. This is when all hell broke loose. So 
it, it had to have been the bottom of the ninth inning when this happened. It was a tie ball game because Texas was out in the field. Jeff Burrows, uh, who was a pretty big guy and a really good baseball player back in the day, had he not been hurt, Jeff Burrows would have uh, would have had a a great career in Major League Baseball. I think he won a uh, Rookie of the Year, and a, I want to say he won an MVP. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but he was a pretty damn good player. Uh, just unfortunately, injuries got to him. Well, one of the inebriated knuckleheads jumps over the fence at the old stadium, runs up to Jeff Burroughs to try to grab his hat. So he grabs his hat, and as he's making his return back into the seats, he dropped the hat. Well, he turns around, tries to get it, and Jeff Burroughs got him. Jeff Burroughs pretty much popped him. But while doing it, Burroughs fell to the ground. This is where it all came terribly wrong. Fans started pouring out of the stands in right field. And Billy Martin, who was known to be a, a hothead, and we're, we're being very kind with that one, Billy Martin uh, thought he saw Burroughs get knocked down by the fan. So he grabbed a bat, told everyone in the dugout to grab a bat, and proceeded to go out and go to war with the fans that were starting to spew out onto the field. And the Indians players saw this, and they didn't want anything bad to happen to the Texas Rangers players because, hey, look, it's a tight fraternity. Major League Baseball is a tight fraternity even back then. So they grabbed bats, and everyone was going up against the fans. And you're talking about two or, two or 300 people started pouring out of the stadium, and everyone was looking to beat the snot out of both the Rangers players as well as the Indians players. And there were guys that got clobbered, guys that were getting stuff thrown at them. Uh, one of the guys had his head busted open uh, with, a, with a bottle that was thrown off his head. Uh, a home plate umpire got a chair upside his head. Uh, and he was he was knocked silly. Uh, the Cleveland Police Department, one of the major one of the many many problems of this promotion. <laughs> it's not funny. Forty seven years later, I guess you can chuckle. The Cleveland Police Department, the Indians really didn't think of having extra police. So the security that was there at the old stadium, they were overwhelmed. So the SWAT team had to come in. All the while, Joe Tate and Herb Score are announcing this. And Joe was one, God bless him, I, it's, I still consider him to be the greatest basketball broadcaster I ever heard in my life. And, and he is a big reason why I became a broadcaster. He just went off on the fans, went off on the idea, went off. It just said it was the most moronic thing he had ever seen. It was an embarrassment to the game. Uh, the, the, the fans were embarrassing. He went off on everybody. And Joe was one of those guys that he, he get, he'll get away with it because Joe told it like it was. That, that made him, for me, the best play-by-play -play broadcaster uh, in basketball and a damn good one at baseball, too. Very underrated baseball broadcaster. One of my favorites to ever do a game. And he just went off on everybody. Went off on the organization. Went off on the fans. Went off on the whole idea. Herb score was, uh, you know, Herb was the same way. And these guys, and they were, they were broadcasting a riot is what they were doing. And you had to get the, the Rangers players and the Indians players both in the dugout. You had to get them out of harm's way with people. Then the SWAT team shows up, and they start throwing tear gas on the field. And, and most of the crowd then from that point disperses. Now, I had a friend whose father went to the game, and, and he was able to get out of there unscathed. But he said the lasting image for him was outside of Municipal Stadium. Back in the day, the, the, uh, there were cops that would, would be on horses in, in Cleveland. You would have police officers that would, that would be riding a horse 
in downtown Cleveland directing traffic. It was really cool to see this. There was a guy that had longer hair. The hair was past his shoulders. And he was giving somebody either the business or grief or fisticuffs, not sure what it was. But my, but my friend's dad said the cop saw this, got the horse on a gallop, and without missing a beat, the cop grabs this guy with his right hand, grabs him by the hair, turns his wrist around so he can get more of his hair, literally picks this guy up off of the ground onto the horse as they're galloping away to jail. Said it was one of the funniest things he'd ever seen in his life. And obviously, 47 years later, other than the Disco Sucks Night at Comiskey, which caused a forfeiture of the second game of the doubleheader uh, with the White Sox, this one, because the Indians had to forfeit the game to the Texas Rangers, this one and Disco Demolition Night at Comiskey Park are without question the two single dumbest promotions and most violent promotions the game of baseball has ever seen. And if it weren't stupid enough that the Indians tried this on this date back in 1974, they did it again three weeks later. Why? But they were smart enough to have security from floor to ceiling and they were also smart enough to say, okay, you're only allowed four beers. You're only allowed four. A four is the absolute limit. Ten cent beer night part two. Nothing uh, came of it, although there were 40,000 people at the stadium that night. There were only 20 and change uh, in Cleveland uh, for the original ten cent beer night, which caused all the, uh, the ruckus. But uh, that and the... Disco Sucks Night or Disco Demolition Night at Comiskey Park, without question, the two dumbest promotions uh, that caused two riots uh, in in ballparks. And, uh, yeah, welcome to the 1970s. All right, which leads me to uh, to the story with my dad and my, uh, my two older brothers and I. We're in Cleveland. We're in bleacher seats. Cleveland was playing Kansas City, and I think it was George Brett's rookie year, so it was 75 uh, when this was going on. Huge into the Indians. I mean, a big Indians fan. Uh, if my dad wasn't taking me to the ball game, I had a, I had a cousin uh, that, that, uh, that loved the Indians as much as I did, and we would go up every other weekend to watch the Indians play. I mean, I had all kinds of fun watching the Indians, even though they were god-awful in the 70s. I had so much fun watching this team play. And Cleveland Stadium was a disaster. I mean, it was just it was a dump. It was. It was the worst stadium to this day I've ever been in for baseball. But it was ours. And it, and it was, you know, I mean, if, as long as you weren't behind a, a, a beam, one of those steel beams, it was cool to see a baseball game from there, even though it was not a baseball stadium. Uh, you were so far away from uh, from home plate because this stadium was built for football, and the stadium essentially was built to try to get the 1932 Olympics, which they never got. Anyway, Cleveland Stadium, uh, 1975. So my dad, my brothers, and I were watching a game. It's a night game at the old stadium. Kansas City winds up winning the ball game, I think, by a run. Anyway, uh, we're watching the game. Now, back in those days, the bleachers were – it was an area where you did not have concession stands. The old bleachers, you had to get out of the bleachers, and then you had to walk over to the extreme left or extreme right reserve tickets, and that's where the concourse was, and, and that's where the, the concession stands were. So you had vendors. And back in those days, you had a vendor that would carry a full thing of beer. Now, the the beers that they carried, I believe it was six or seven rows of beers, six or seven beers uh, to uh, horizontally and vertically. So about anywhere from 42 to 49 beers. Uh, actually, it was... 
It was either 6x6, six six, which is 36, or 7x7, seven seven, which was 49. I'm almost positive it was 6x6. Six six. Anyway, you're looking at about 36 beers. All right, so a person behind us orders a beer, and the guy's out. The, the, the guy's out of beer, but he says, I'll be back. All right. But an inning comes by. But an inning goes by, I should say. And he comes back. Now, keep in mind, we're we're sitting a row below this guy. So we're we're in the row we're in the row closer to the center field. <clears throat> so this guy orders the beer. And sure enough, the, the vendor comes in with a brand new, has not been touched, 36 16 ounce cups of beer. Now, I am not a very smart student when it comes to geometry, but I do know one thing. If you take something that large and you take a beer from the extreme left or the extreme right, it's going to be imbalanced. And the guy that's holding this is probably not going to be able to hold it for very long. You would more than likely want to pick a beer from the center where it's centered and the person would be able to hold it. It would be sturdy. You wouldn't have any issues with with the imbalance. No, this guy clearly did not take Geometry 101, so he took a beer from the far left-hand corner. Exactly 15 seconds after he did that, the remaining 35 beers fell exploded to the ground, and it trickled down each step. And, and back in the old stadium, you had the, the bleachers, which was the dog pound during, uh, during football season. Uh, the bleachers had steps. Uh, you would have 35 beers, 16-ounce beers. Do the arithmetic, people. 35 uh, of those at 16 ounces. Uh, you're talking 560 ounces of beer has just fallen to the ground and to the row where we are. I am not lying when I say this. We were past ankle deep in beer. We were past ankle deep in beer. And we were ankle deep in beer for, I would say, a good five or ten minutes before it started trickling down the, uh, down the path uh, toward the first row of seats in the old bleachers at the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium. So the game is over. We go back home, and we're stinking of beer because, obviously, you, you can't get rid of that smell. And, and, and clearly, the shoes are pretty much genocide at this point. So we get back home, and the first words from my mom, um, Gene, you want to tell me something here? <laughs> Why do our kids smell like a brewery factory? <laughs> oh, God, one of the funniest things that uh, – Funniest things that we did growing up, for sure. All right, 330-886-0813. We're back in a bit. Stick around. More to come. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. And by being with you for every mile of your journey. Visit GreenwoodChevrolet.com and tell us how we can go the extra mile for you. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high-quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed 
comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. At Hubbard Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need, regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache, and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Pache, to get a new vehicle today. Remember, folks, Hubbard can help. Every customer has a story, and at Greenwood Chevrolet, we are committed to making sure it ends with you in the right vehicle. I get to be part of somebody's adventure, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their finances, they trust me to take care of them, and they trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. Jimmy Sutman here, director of Isle, Purple Cat, and Golden String. We are happy to support YSN and two of my favorite people, Scotty Mincher and Super Dave O'Malley. We are an agency that provides services for adults with disabilities. We infuse humor, passion, and joy into their lives. If you know of any folks with disabilities that need our assistance, please contact us. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours, because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Friday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Some great, great news from Strongsville. Uh, they have played two innings of baseball, uh, according to uh, 21 Sports Director Dana Bolish. Warren JFK is demolishing Columbia Station six to nothing after two innings of play. So uh, good news right now for the Mahoning Valley. Uh, the first team in action today, uh, the Warren JFK Eagles. They are leading Columbia Station six to nothing after two innings of play from Strongsville High School. If JFK wins this ball game, they will take on the winner of the Matthews game, uh, Matthews and Tiffin Calvert, who play at 4.30 today. 
If it is uh, JFK and uh, Matthews for a regional championship, there is talk of a school in the Mahoning Valley to uh, be the home for this regional championship game. My thought is, why not have one of the Trumbull County schools uh, open their doors? I mean, off the top of my head, I can think of some pretty damn good ballparks uh, in in Trumbull County that would be really good places uh, for these two teams to to play each other. Uh, Champion comes to mind. Uh, that that's a uh, that's a pretty nice facility. Uh, and and obviously, if it's Trumbull County, then you know, Matthews is in Trumbull County up in Vienna. Obviously, Warren, JFK, Warren is in Trumbull County. So if you have one of the Trumbull County schools step up, yeah, I mean, obviously, you could, you could have one of, the, one of the Mahoning County schools step up. We had heard Austin Town Fitch uh, could be a possible destination. But again, in order for this to happen, both local teams would have to win the ball games. Uh, right now, Warren JFK is in pretty good shape. They lead Columbia Station six to nothing after two innings of work, two innings of play uh, from uh, Strongsville out on the west side of Cleveland. So uh, fingers crossed uh, that JFK uh, continues to pour it on Columbia Station. We do have some uh, hardware to uh, to pass out. Uh, Division two and Division three had their um, All-State, actually all four divisions did, but locally, Division II uh, baseball, All-State, according to the uh, Coaches Association, Ryan Petro and Josh Giuliano from Canfield both made first team All-Ohio. Petro is Canfield's ace on the mound. Josh Giuliano, a very talented outfielder for the Canfield Cardinals. Also receiving honorable mention, All-State for Canfield, Landon Meidelsheets. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Ryan Petro and Josh Giuliano, first team, all state, uh, Division II, all Ohio. Uh, honorable mention, Landon Beidelsheis, uh from Canfield, all Ohio. Honorable mention. Division Three. here are your local guys. Uh, Brendan Mikos from South Range. Uh, South Range's ace, first team, all Ohio. Uh, and Trey Pancake, I believe he's an outfielder. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, uh, Trey, who's headed to Ohio State, uh, he is all state uh, for South Range. Honorable mention, Mitchell Seymour from Springfield. Uh, he got honorable mention all state. And again, the folks voting on this are the baseball coaches throughout the state of Ohio. Uh, throughout the state of Ohio, the baseball coaches are uh, are voting for this, not necessarily uh, the broadcasters and the media uh, the rest of the media that covers it. So uh, these are these are coming from the coaches. So uh, Brandon Mikos and Trey Pancake from South Range, first team All State in Division Three. Mitchell Seymour from Springfield, honorable mention, All State in Division Three. Uh, so congratulations to to all of those kids getting uh, their accolades uh, in D two and D three. Uh, as the All State teams were announced, D one through D four. Those are the only local kids. Uh, that that made the uh, cut, per se. Uh, some news out of the National Football League pertaining to the Steelers. Ian Rappaport reporting uh, that Malik Hooker, Newcastle native, former Colts first-round safety, spent yesterday visiting the Steelers. Uh, it would be a pretty interesting get for the Steelers if they were to get uh, Malik Hooker. Keep in mind, Malik Hooker went to high school at Newcastle, just inside the uh, Ohio-Pennsylvania border, in the Mahoning Valley, in Lawrence County, uh, Newcastle, home of the uh, Newcastle Hurricanes. Uh, Malik Hooker went to Ohio State University. Really good safety. Uh, Now, he had struggled uh, after getting injured. Uh, He had struggled a little bit, but I'm going to be honest. You put Malik Hooker at one safety position and you put the other safety position to uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. Wow. Uh, you, you got some, you got two pretty good names. Now, again, Malik Hooker is nowhere near the player that he was uh, when he first started with Indianapolis, but that doesn't mean that, you know, that he can't get back to that form. He's still a young guy. 
I, you get Malik Hooker in a Steeler uniform, you got two damn good safeties uh, in Malik Hooker and uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. And, and, and by the way, um, you know, I, I, I know a lot of Browns fans are, are still basking in the we beat the Steelers in the playoffs and, you know, we finally have their number. Let's slow this one down a little bit. I, I, I am not one to put a wet blanket on anything. But if you think for one second that that was a thorough beating, it wasn't. What that was was anything that could have went wrong went wrong the first 15 minutes of that game. And the Steelers were in a really deep hole. I think people need to be reminded that Pittsburgh was scoring at will on Cleveland's offense and was just ready to get back into the ball game when Cleveland's offense decided to wake up again. That was in no way, shape, or form a, quote, beatdown. It was more of a... Everything that could have gone wrong for the Steelers went wrong for the Steelers, and it snowballed from there. That game kind of reminds me of Super Bowl Twenty Seven, the first time the Bills played the Cowboys. If you remember, the final score was like 52 to 14, 52 to 17, some crazy-ass number. Bills had a 10-7 lead at the end of the first quarter. And then everything that could have gone wrong for the Bills went wrong. The turnovers, the injuries, the turnovers that were turned into touchdowns. Anything that could have gone wrong for the Bills in this early in the second quarter till the end of that ball game, anything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Yeah, they lost by 38 points to the Dallas Cowboys, but I would venture to say a good 28 to 31 of those points came directly off of turnovers, if not more. That was a beatdown, but it wasn't a we were that much better than you on the football field. No, that was Buffalo made a lot of mistakes, and all of that went into a big old snowball that just came careening down the hill and there wasn't anything you can do about it same thing with the Steelers I think if you go back to that game anything that could have went wrong for Pittsburgh in that first quarter went wrong and before you knew it Cleveland was up 28 to nothing I I mean it was it was just ridiculous to see how much stuff went wrong it wasn't about Cleveland was that much better than Pittsburgh. No, everything Pittsburgh did went wrong. There's a big difference between we physically dominated you, therefore we are that much better than you. There's a big difference between that and we took advantage of all of your mistakes and converted all of those mistakes into points and buried you. Because there seems to me... Pittsburgh had gotten back into the ball game in about the third quarter, and a lot of people were sweating bullets that the Browns were going to blow this lead because their defense wasn't any good. Now, obviously, the Browns have gotten a whole lot better, at least on paper they have, uh, on defense. And I'll be curious to see what happens. But long story short, anyone that wants to sit back and discount the Steelers right now Do so at your own volition because I'm going to tell you right now, Pittsburgh is not going anywhere. This is not a bad football team. Now, it will take a step back. I don't think they're going to be starting the season 11-0. As a matter of fact, I know they won't because they're going to get their ass kicked in week one. So they're not going to start the season 11-0 like they did last year. But they're gonna, they're not going to be that bad of a team. I think a lot of people are sitting back, and I haven't, I haven't even heard the people in Pittsburgh say, ah, eight and nine, nine and eight. Huh? Uh, look, 
the the tail end of that schedule is brutal. Yes, no question about that. And if the Steelers are going to be a playoff team, well, what the last four games are brutal. You better be ten and three, nine and four. You better be somewhere in that direction after the first thirteen games, because those last four games the Steelers got to play. Oh man, that's brutal. That's brutal. But don't think for a second that this isn't going to be a three-team race in the AFC North, because it is. Now, Pittsburgh may fall off toward the end because of their brutal final four games, but I've, I've heard a lot of people sit back and say, well, this, this is, you know, this is, Pittsburgh is, we, we've kicked them to the, to the curb. Now we got to, now we got to uh, concentrate on Baltimore. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. You haven't kicked anybody to the curb. You didn't kick anybody to the curb. That that's uh, that's foolish talk right there. Pittsburgh's not going anywhere. I'll I'll grant you, they're not going to be as good as last year. Now I'll, I'll grant you that, especially when you look at the schedule and again the final four games uh, of the season. That it's nothing to sneeze at. I mean the final four games of the year, uh, you got to take on Tennessee, who's going to be pretty good this year, in Pittsburgh. You got to go to Kansas City the day after Christmas. The Browns come to Pittsburgh, and then you got to go to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. That's four pretty, pretty tough games. That's four pretty tough games. But the rest of this schedule, I mean, you know, after the after Week One, uh, where they take on the, the the Bills, all right, the Raiders come to, uh, to to Pittsburgh, Bengals come to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh goes to Green Bay, Denver comes to Pittsburgh, Seattle comes to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh goes to Cleveland for a Halloween uh, matchup with the Browns. Bears come to Pittsburgh. Lions come to Pittsburgh. Steelers go to Los Angeles to play the Chargers. Steelers go to Cincinnati. The Ravens come to Pittsburgh. Steelers go to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. And then you got the final four games of the season. It's not a bad schedule. Pittsburgh, they're not going to be as bad as what a lot of Cleveland people seem to think. And, and oh, by the way, um, look, is Cleveland a Super Bowl contender? I'm not willing to go that far because you haven't even won your division yet. You still haven't solved Baltimore yet. Are they or could they be? Absolutely. Could they be? Oh, absolutely they could. I, I look at the AFC. And take Kansas City out of the equation because they're the team that everyone is going to have to beat. They're the best team in the AFC until someone beats them. But the teams lining up to face Kansas City, Buffalo ain't going anywhere anytime soon. As long as they're healthy, again, assuming everyone stays healthy, assuming, you know, on paper at least, Buffalo ain't going anywhere. That's a really good football team. Indianapolis is a whole lot better than what people think. And if they can get themselves Julio Jones, look out. Don't know if they will, but that's an under-the-radar team that not enough people are talking about. That is a damn good football team. Tennessee, if they can get Julio Jones, holy crap, is that team going to be a lot of fun to watch. And then you got Baltimore. Baltimore is still the, the the team in that AFC North. If Pittsburgh is taking a step back, Cleveland fans want to sit back and go, okay, well, we're going to win. The, you haven't even beaten Baltimore. You didn't beat Baltimore last year. You lost to them twice. You, you, got, you got to beat Baltimore in order to win the division. Baltimore ain't going anywhere. That defense is ridiculously good, and they picked up a couple of weapons. Now, that team's going to be a lot of fun to watch. And I, you got Cleveland. And there's another team, and I know that they have no shot whatsoever of winning the West unless all hell breaks loose with injuries. But I'm going to tell you what, the Los Angeles Chargers are going to be a really dangerous football team this year. They are going to be a dangerous football team. And there's two teams in the AFC East that I think people had better – better be aware of and I am certainly not someone that believes Buffalo is a shoe in to win the East this year because Miami is going to be a lot of fun to watch 
I think Buffalo is a better team because Miami doesn't have their quarterback in place. I don't think two is the answer. And I think behind the scenes, a lot of people started snickering at New England saying, oh, Tom Brady left. Look at how bad this team was. People better remember two things. Number one, New England has the best head coach not named Vincent Thomas Lombardi in the history of the National Football League. And number two, seven or eight of their starters sat out 2020 because of COVID. And oh, by the way, they picked up arguably the best quarterback in the draft, not named Trevor Lawrence. That kid from Alabama, holy crap, is that kid good. And they got him. And they didn't have to move up to get him. New England is going to be heard from. Uh, New England and Miami are both going to uh, to be heard from. It would not surprise me if one or both of those teams get into the playoffs. this This is going to be an unbelievably great season in the AFC because there's about... And I just made mention of the teams. Buffalo, Miami, and New England out of the east. Indianapolis and Tennessee out of the south. I don't think Jacksonville's ready and Houston is is a, is a train wreck at this point. Baltimore, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh out of the north. Kansas City and, and uh, Los Angeles, the Chargers, out of the, out of the west. And if Vegas finally figures it out, they're on the outskirts. Vegas Vegas might figure it out. Uh, that would be the 11th team. There's only seven teams going to the postseason. I just named 10 teams in the AFC. Someone's going to be disappointed. Actually, three teams are going to be disappointed because uh, they're not going to be good enough to get into the playoffs. The AFC is absolutely loaded on paper in 2021. There is no guarantee for any of the 10 teams that I just made mention, mainly because of injuries. But if there's two teams that are a safe bet, barring any injuries, it's Kansas City and Buffalo because they're the two best teams in this conference. And again, barring injuries, those are the two best teams. The rest of the – oh, my God, the rest of this division – and again – who knows? Kansas City and Buffalo may both take a step back. As a matter of fact, I don't. It, what Buffalo finished thirteen and three last year. They're gonna they're gonna finish with more than three losses this year. They might finish twelve and five, win their division at twelve and five, thirteen and four. They might win their division at that. Hell, they may they may sneak in as a wild card. Who? It, it, it's. Do I think the Bills win the division? Yes. Do I think the Bills finish with 12 wins? I'm hoping. If everything is, if they're as good on paper and they stay healthy, this could be a fun year. Same with Cleveland. But there is a list of teams, serious Super Bowl contenders. There's a pretty long list in the AFC. And I just made a list of 10 teams, 11 if you count the Raiders, that are good enough to make a playoff run. And there's only seven teams going to the playoffs in the AFC as well as the NFC. I'm just saying there's there's going to be two or three, actually there's going to be three, possibly four teams that are going to be really, really disappointed in the outcome of their season. Because the AFC is absolutely stacked. It is stacked with talent. Ridiculous talent. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. I got a score from the uh, regional semifinals in uh, Canton Glen Oak. They've played one. Uh, Dana Ballish reporting Salem has taken a one to nothing lead on the Canfield Cardinals. Listen, we made mention of this. Uh, we, we've been talking about how great Canfield is all year long. They are, no question about it. Salem has been that team behind the scenes, 
that have probably been tired of hearing about how good Canfield is. And they have been looking forward to this day. They have been looking forward to this day. Uh, Well, this day has come, and you're one inning in, and Salem has taken a one-to-nothing lead on Canfield. Uh, Still a long way to go, but Salem has a lead on Canfield, one-to-nothing after one inning. Uh, JFK leading Columbia Station, six-to-nothing last report. Uh, That game was in the... Uh, going into the third inning. And now JFK has taken a 7 to nothing lead on Columbia Station uh, through three. Uh, JFK well on their way to a victory, barring a complete disaster. Uh, meanwhile, uh, an update, uh, and again, many, many thanks to Dana Ballish, 21 Sports Director. Uh, end of two innings. Salem and Canfield now tied at one. If both of these starters... Uh, Lane Rhodes for Salem, uh, Mr. Petro for Canfield. If both of these guys are on their A game, it's going to be quick. It's going to be a quick-moving game. If both of these guys are on their A game, this is going to be a very fast-moving game. Uh, And, again, uh, it took 12 minutes. Uh, Dana Ballish uh, reported 12 minutes ago Salem was up on Canfield one to nothing at the end of one. 12 minutes later, we get another report after another inning of play. Uh, main it, it, to uh, to give everyone a little perspective on that, it normally takes about 15 minutes, 20 minutes to get through an inning. They just got through an inning in 12. That's going to be a quick moving game, especially if if Rhodes and uh, and the uh, uh, Petro, both of the aces for Salem and Canfield respectively, if they're on their A game, oh my God, is this going to be a great game? And it has the makings of it right now. End of two, Salem and Canfield tied at one. I will take a timeout. Be back with more three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We're back in a bit. Stick around. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We're locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. This is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student athletes in the Valley. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of pre-owned vehicles. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your pre-owned vehicle and much more. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their pre-owned vehicle at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. 
and locally we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Rain will come and go tomorrow. There'll be some dry intervals. Stay ready with Storm Tracker 21. The severe weather threat now through around sunset this evening. My Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Sixty years ago, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods began with three siblings, a handset sawmill, and a few local orders. And while business has certainly changed over the years, what has not are our principles of hard work, craftsmanship, and commitment to quality. At Baird Brothers, we're proud to put our name on the products we create, from moldings and doors to flooring and lumber. Thank you for 60 great years. We look forward to 60 more. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Welcome back to a Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. All right, uh, your latest updates uh, Warren JFK leading Columbia Station 7 to nothing. Barring a disaster, JFK looks to be poised to go to the regional championship game. Now, here's where things get interesting. Uh, Kennedy, if they knock off Columbia Station, they would play the winner of the Matthews-Tiffin-Calvert game. If Matthews knocks off Tiffin-Calvert, there is a chance that that regional championship game would be played in the Mahoning Valley. There was talk. As a matter of fact, uh, it was going to be seen park on Friday afternoon had they played the games yesterday when they were supposed to. Unfortunately, because Mother Nature uh, did what she did, uh, all the games got pushed back a day. So, unfortunately, uh, scene park is not available for a potential regional championship game between Warren JFK and Matthew. So they would have to go elsewhere. Uh, but there is talk that there could be a couple of schools that would be more than willing to say, hey, we'll, we'll play the game. Now, the only way that happens is if Matthews uh, and JFK both win. Now, as we made mention, JFK is on their way. They have a 7 to nothing lead on Columbia Station in the third inning. The other regional semifinal, Matthews taking on Tiffin Calvert. If Tiffin Calvert happens to beat Matthews, well, then the game would be played uh, in, uh, in Strongsville. Uh, the regional championship game would be played in Strongsville uh, tomorrow. Uh, but if Matthews were to uh, knock off Tiffin uh, Calvert and JFK were to hang on and beat Columbia Station, there's a pretty good chance that the regional championship game would be played somewhere in the Mahoning Valley. But again, the only way that happens is if both JFK and Matthews win. Uh, and right now, JFK uh, is holding up their end of the bargain and then some as they lead Columbia Station 7 to nothing at last report. Uh, we'll keep you updated. Uh, the other game that is going on, and that is at Canton Glen Oak High School uh, in Canton. Uh, the Salem Quakers and the Canfield Cardinals are deadlocked at one. They are in the third inning. Now, the winner of that game is going to be taking on the winner of the Hoban Chagrin Falls game. And that would be played uh, tomorrow. Uh, that would be played tomorrow at uh, Canton Glen Oak. And that would be at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Uh, so whoever wins the Canfield Salem game, and at last report, 
they're in the third inning. Canfield and Salem tied at one in the third inning as we speak, or at least at last report where they were in the third inning. Uh, whoever wins that game is going to be playing at Canton Glen Oak High School tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Uh, the winner of the Canfield-Salem game takes on the winner of the akron Hoban chagrin Falls game tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock at Canton Glen Oak High School. Uh, later today, South Range will be playing uh, Gilmore Academy at 5 o'clock. Uh, if the Raiders happen to win... The title game will start at 2 o'clock, which I'm still miffed by that because you would think they would have the title game at 5 o'clock, being that the South Range girls are playing in Akron at 1230. I mean, this makes all the sense in the world. Put the game at 5 o'clock in the afternoon at Maslin, you would have the South Range girls playing their state semifinal game against uh, Johnstown uh, at 12.30. Johnstown Monroe uh, and South Range at 12.30. And once that game is over, what about 2.30? And softball normally is a pretty quick game. So what about 2.30 you should be out of there? Well, the game doesn't start the, the South Range game. If you, if you put it on at 5, you would have plenty of time to go from Firestone Stadium in Akron to Maslin, which is about a half hour. You'd have plenty of time. Plenty of time for those people to make the trip, about a 30-minute trip, and partake in a South Range regional championship game. Now, of course, if South Range doesn't win, the point is moot. But why they would play that game at 2 o'clock, that, that's absurd. Normally, you would have the OHSAA looking at this and saying, okay, we got to be able to appease the community because the softball teams in the state semifinals, you got the baseball team in the regional championship, you, know, you want to get – South Range Nation showing up for both games, it would make all the sense in the world to have the game at five. Apparently, that is not the case. All right, your updates. Uh, they're now in the fourth inning. Made mention it's going to be a quick game, especially if Lane Rhodes and Mr. Petro are on their A game. And uh, according to the score, uh, one would assume that both of these guys are on their A game. Uh, Salem scored in the first inning. Lane Rhodes contributed to his own cause with an RBI double down the right field line, uh, giving the Quakers a one to nothing lead in the bottom of the first inning. Canfield got even with a two-out base hit, uh, and that was a base hit by Ryan Petro. So both pitchers are not only pitching incredibly well, uh, they have both been responsible for driving in the runs. So uh, there you go. Uh, there you go. I uh, cannot wait to see what transpires here the rest of the day. It, this is uh, this going to be a good one. Th this is going to be a good one. I just hope that Petro and Rhodes, Ryan Petro from Canfield, Lane Rhodes from Salem, I sincerely hope that both of these kids are able to finish the job before the 125 pitch state mandated limit. Now, editorial note: 125 pitches over seven innings is way too much. But if this game were to go, say, nine innings, 125 pitches in nine innings, yeah, that's doable, and that's actually not a bad thing. 14 pitches an inning, give or take. Uh, well, it's just about 14 pitches an inning. That's not a bad thing. I hope whoever wins this game, and listen, we don't root for anybody when, when the two local teams, YSN teams, are involved. We don't root for anybody. What I hope for is this. For this game to be all that it's cracked up to be, and right now, through three innings, 
it is and then some. Both pitchers have given up a run. Both pitchers have driven in the run, the only run scored for their prospective teams. My hope is Ryan Petro and slash or Lane Rhodes gets to finish this game without the 125 pitches or a pitch limit deciding who wins this game. That would be my hope. Whoever wins this game, whether it's Salem, whether it's Canfield, whoever wins this game, I just hope if both of these guys are on their A game, and it sure as hell looks like they are, at least for right now, and knock on wood that they're going to continue to be on their A game, I really hope that whoever wins this game, the starting pitcher will not be taken out of the game and they will have gotten the job done before the 125 pitch limit comes to to play. But this game, and it's early, you still got plenty of baseball to be played, but for right now, this game is living up to the billing. And uh, I was hoping that Lane Rhodes and Ryan Petro would be on their A games. And through the first three innings, they're on their A game. We'll see what transpires. Uh, But uh, right now at the end of three, Salem and Canfield are deadlocked at one. And uh, boy, does that have the makings of an unbelievable game. And I made mention, I truly believe this is the best region of the four regions in Division II. I truly believe this is the best region. You have four really, really good, borderline great, uh, and in well, actually, you can make a case all four of these teams are playing great baseball. I truly believe whoever comes out of this region will be winning a state championship in Division Two, And it, whoever wins the Canfield-Salem game, believe me when I tell you, you're going your, you're, you're to have your hands full. Uh, Chagrin Falls, they're good. They're really good. And uh, Tony, who's a, uh, who's a big Hoban fan, and he's – He's been to more Hoban athletic events than than any of us. Uh, he tells when he tells me uh, that Hoban is good, I'm gonna take his word for it because uh, he doesn't steer me wrong. And if he tells me Hoban is a really good baseball team, then they're a really good baseball team. But I know, talking from my uh, from the people that I trust, uh, they tell me Chagrin Falls is a damn good baseball team. Whoever wins this Canfield Salem game. They are going to have their hands full and then some uh, when they take on the winner of Hoban and Chagrin Falls. That oh boy, that is a badass region. Uh, it is a really, really tough region. All right, uh, last report. We haven't heard an update in a while. Uh, JFK at last report was leading Columbia Station seven to nothing. Uh, again, mercy rules are part of baseball. If you're up by ten or more runs after five innings, or if you're the home team and the visiting team is batted in their half of the fifth inning, uh, so a four and a half or five innings, if you're up by ten runs or more, you win. Uh, so JFK, they're they're getting there. They have a seven to nothing lead at last report. So hopefully. Uh, they continue to uh, to do their thing, and and uh, hopefully we'll see half of the area getting into a regional championship game again. The the uh, back half of the doubleheader uh, in uh, Division Four up in uh, Strongsville, which is west of the city of Cleveland. Uh, Matthews will be taking on Tiffin Calvert. If Matthews and JFK both win, there is a really good chance one of the schools in this area is going to be uh, opening up their baseball facilities and will play the uh, regional championship game from that particular facility. But you got to get both of the local teams to uh, to win the game first. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for a business. We will take a final timeout, be back to put the wraps on this Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Back to wrap this puppy up after this timeout. Stick around. 
Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Every customer has a story, whether it's buying a car for the first time, helping them get approved, or finding the perfect car for their budget. I'm proud that people trust me with their story. I'm Tracy, and I'm ready to go the extra mile for you only at Greenwood Chevrolet. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we go the extra mile for you. By finding you the right vehicle at the right price. By giving you confidence in your vehicle with the Greenwood Advantage warranty. By guaranteeing you financing. Regardless of your situation or credit history and by being with you for every mile of your journey. At Greenwood Chevrolet, we do whatever it takes to go the extra mile. So, how can we go the extra mile for you? Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com for heating, cooling, and indoor air quality. The Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. If you're looking for a new Ford vehicle, why shop anywhere else but Tri-State Ford? Choose from our great selection of new Ford models. Plus, we've got you covered with our exclusive Tri-State Ford Advantage. It includes a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty with your new Ford. Come see why so many customers from the Tri-State area buy their new Ford at Tri-State Ford. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back as we close up shop on this Friday edition of Running Point. Ron Potesta with you. Another scoreless inning for Salem and Canfield. This game continuing to move along. Salem and Canfield in the fifth inning, tied at one. Again, both pitchers, Ryan Petro from Canfield and uh, Lane Rhodes from uh, Salem. Uh, not only are they pitching extremely well, both pitchers are responsible for driving in the lone run 
for their respective teams. Uh, Lane Rhodes with an RBI double in the first inning. Ryan Petro with a base hit, uh, scoring a run in the top of the second. Salem is the home team uh, as they are in the fifth inning. Salem and Canfield are tied at one uh, in the regional semifinals. And, And again, both teams... Both of their pitchers on their A game, which is exactly what uh, what we wanted. As and I'm, I'm considering myself a fan in this. Uh, that, <laughs> this has got to be a, uh, a nail biting, great game. Uh, the folks in Salem have wanted Canfield. Uh, th- these two teams played each other the first game of the year. Lane Rhodes only gave up one hit, and then they took him out of the ball game because they're first league game was later in the week and they wanted to pitch him for the first league game and that's when Canfield wound up scoring 10 runs and they knocked off Salem 10 to nothing in the first game of the season and I know a lot of people looked at that score and said oh this shouldn't be a problem that's the backstory on that Lane Rhodes only gave up one hit the first four innings against Canfield then Canfield scored uh, 10 runs after they took him out of the ball game that was the first game of the year Right now they're tied at one, and ain't nobody getting taken out of this ball game until 125 pitches come to uh, fruition. Uh, the other game going on, they're in the fifth inning. Warren JFK leads Columbia Station seven to one. Uh, so JFK is looking really good. Again, barring a disaster, Warren JFK looks really good uh, to advance to the regional championship. Uh, tomorrow, and they could very well be facing the uh, Matthews Mustangs. They will be taking on Tiffin Calvert at 430. If Tiffin Calvert wins that game and JFK hangs on for their victory, the regional championship game would be played in the west end of Cleveland in Strongsville. However, if Kennedy and Matthews were to both win the regional championship game, from what I understand, it would be played in the Mahoning Valley. They're just trying to figure out the official word on where uh, they would play the game. There are a couple of uh, alternatives, uh, a couple of spots. Salem has scored a run in the top of the fifth inning. They lead Canfield 2-1 to one going into the bottom half of inning number five. Quakers lead Canfield 2-1 to one going into the bottom of the fifth inning. Or I should say... St- Salem's still batting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Keep in mind, it, it is uh, Salem is the home team. So Canfield is now down 2-1 to one and down to their final six outs as it's a seven-inning game. So Salem has taken a 2-1 lead, still batting in the bottom of the fifth inning. Quakers lead Canfield 2-1. to one. All right, that's how we're going to leave it. Power Hour is coming up next. Enjoy your weekend. We're back on Monday. Anthony and I, noon to 3 on 